kitchen purposes, but for sanity purposes. Oh, did you hit live yet? Yes, I did. Uh, three, two, one. Here we go. Hi, everybody. It is Tuesday, June 9th, and we are here with one of my favorite people, Miss Tara Melvin. Everybody say hello to her. And today we are going to talk about a new era of higher standards. Of course, you know, with COVID-19 happening, we're going to have to do things just a little bit different, or maybe a lot of bit different <laughs> to keep up with everything. So um, just a little bit about Tara. She's a Southern girl at heart. She was born and raised in Elizabethtown, North Carolina. And in 1996, she transitioned to Washington, D.C. Before making her D before making DC her new home, though, she began carving her her future with. For, uh, I'm sorry, she began carving her future with her education. She is a graduate of North Carolina A and T University in Greensboro, where she earned a bachelor's degree in marketing with a minor in business administration. In 2004, Tara created Perfect Planning Event and Signature Concept, an event planning and management company that offers a complete array of services to cover all facets of event planning for upscale weddings, social, and corporate events from start to finish. Services include, but not limited to, event coordination, vendor management, project plan creation, event itinerary creation, and risk and issue management. It is her philosophy to deliver exceptional service, a peace of mind, and a memorable celebration for her clients, for her clients and their guests. Everybody, welcome, Miss Tara Melvin. Yay! Thank you so What's much for coming on. <laughs> What's up, girlfriend? How are you? <laughs> good, 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 good. So, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Um, first of all, where's my friend? Uh, he is at my feet, not far away. Um, we're talking about <laughs> Mr. Deuce, my dog. So, <laughs> hopefully, he will be quiet. Just like you all have to like calm your children at home, I have to calm him. So, hopefully, he will I be quiet. Yeah, yeah, I understand that concept completely because before we <laughs> but, logged on, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but as you stated, I am a southern girl, um, born and raised in North Carolina, a little small town called Elizabethtown, North Carolina. Um, where is that on the map? We're close to Fedville. If you're um, from that area, you've ever been to White Lake or Jones Lake, that is me, that's where I live. I'm a proud graduate of North Carolina a and State University. Been living in the Washington, D.C. metro area, oh my God, for over 20 some years. Um, when I came here, never left. And so I call this home for the most part, but I never forget where I came from, which is North Carolina. Um, don't like chocolate. If you read my bio, it's on my website. It's a little bit more um, softer. So I do not like chocolate. I do not see food, like seafood. And yes, I am from North Carolina and I do not eat like an inch of seafood. Um, love bourbon, yeah. love shoes, love clothes. That's about it. I love to have fun. We would have to work on the seafood situation. <laughs> Cause I'm made up of eighty percent seafood. Okay, no, mm -mm, don't even touch it. I don't even like the smell of seafood. That's just how bad it is. I cannot stand the smell of seafood. And before you gripe on that, and oh, I'm a big dog lover. That's 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 it about me. All right. Okay. So you you redeemed yourself. With I redeemed myself. Okay. Thank you. You did. You did. So you know what uh, an interesting time 2020 has been. Yes, it has. It definitely feels like some type of some type of movie. I'm sure that there will be a movie created at some point in time in the future about, and it'll just be called 2020. Um, but you know, obviously, um, we are now back around to dealing with an issue that we've been dealing with for a very, 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 very long time. And thank God, um, I feel like maybe we are now being heard. Um, and of course, you know, this, the issue of equality um, also affects the wedding industry as well. I would love to hear your thoughts on, on 
on, on what you think about all of that in your perspective? Well, I will say as far as um, the white community, um, the whole thing about not being included, um, this is something that we go through every single day, but as I always tell people, we put our armor on and we fight against whatever that comes near us and we fight it bravely. Um, I think that is one of the greatest strengths about being black is that we don't let anything really stand in our way. We just keep moving forward. The obstacles come and we keep moving forward. When it comes to our industry, the wedding and event planning industry, again, this is nothing new for pe people that are black. Uh, we are walking to a room for a networking event or, you know, we look at the publications and stuff and we see that we are not there. Um, to the white community, uh, now is the time that we're going to make that change and we're going to make that change with or without you. I think that we should do it together um, because at the end of the day, it's all about humanity and we just need to bridge that gap and to come together um, to make a change. And um, I think one of the things is that um, people that aren't speaking out about it, that are uh, white, they're afraid of losing friends. Um, I don't think you should let that despair you in standing up basically for what's right and what's wrong um, that's going on in our world. But we're gonna conquer this. We're, we're gonna rise above that. And I definitely feel like that we are going to definitely see a difference in our industry. And you're gonna be seeing more of these beautiful brown and black faces. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for giving us your take on that. Um, mm -hmm. Want to hop into the into the topic? What do you mean by a new era of higher standards? What what do you, what do you mean by that? Well, we started with COVID. COVID, you know, like put us at a standstill. And mm -hmm. with COVID, um, I will say that you know we had this time to just you know people haven't been working for the past three, possibly four months. Then right. all of a sudden, when we think, oh, we're, we're almost to the end, we're going to open up, then all of this happens, uh, unfortunately, losing the life of George Floyd, and everybody is standing up for, you know, Black humanity. So with all this that's going on and being shaken up, one, with COVID, um, during this time period, we need to start pivoting. And, you know, looking deep into our business, because now we got to raise our standards of excellence. We've probably been doing things the same way for five, 10, 15 years. But guess what? Now we're really going to have to differentiate ourselves as far as why am I, why should you hire me over Alana Walker? That's my girl. I love her and everything. But you know, now I need to be able to differentiate myself against you and bring value to the table because now our clients, our consumers are really going to be asking, what are you going to do for me? Why should I be spending thousands of dollars with you um, to play in my wedding or play in my event? So it's time to get in there and just raise the bar. Think about what is your your value proposition. And again, your value proposition is, you know, what am I bringing to the table? Right. How does COVID affect your business? Well, financially, right now, I am good. Um, because one of the things is that I, um, and I've been practicing this for so many years, which I've heard in like different uh, Facebook communities is that some people, they're not getting income right now. And it's all based on the structure as far as how whenever a client signs with you, how are you asking them for payment after they make that deposit? For right. me, I started this like years, years ago that once a client makes their retainer payment with me, they're paying me monthly. So I'm not sitting here and waiting for oh, 30 days before their event to get another payment. I am still getting paid, you know, from my existing clients. Now, mm -hmm. where I will be hurting really, really soon is that, 
you know, the new clients, the new people that are coming right now, it's a little slow. Um, I'm not getting those, the phone ringing or the email inbox, you know, buzzing saying, oh, I have an event for 2021, you know, can you help me plan my wedding? Um, so that has how it has um, affected my business. On the positive note, um, it has allowed me to rest. Um, I am taking this time of quietness to really, really rest because before COVID hit, I probably get a minimum of four hours of sleep a night and get up and keep moving full speed like nothing has happened. And so mm-hmm. I will say probably after the first week, that's when I realized, oh, I got some extra time. Oh, I really right. don't need to rush to like do this. Mm-hmm. 8 p.m. Tara is in the bed and I will <laughs> sleep a full 10, 12 hours. Now <laughs> I'm getting a little lazy. I'm just like, oh, I probably need to shake out of this so that you know when event season starts back up, I'll be back at the, that old routine. But you know, mm-hmm. the biggest thing for me is getting that rest and also, like I said, reevaluating what it is that I'm doing, taking care of all those to do lists that I've had forever and a day, and just taking care of those things. Yeah, yeah. I know for a long time, I I was wishing, I was just thinking to myself, I wish I could have a break. Like, I wish I could breathe. I I just feel so tired and I need to catch up on rest. And I never had a thought in my mind of how that was even going to happen. No. I mean, who would think that a pandemic would be the thing that would <laughs> give Give us a little peace. And the last time I got a little bit of peace, I think it's been like two years now when I had my surgery. That was the best eight weeks of my life. Yeah. Being yeah. on drugs, not having a care in the world. My <laughs> mom was here taking care of me. I didn't have to think about eating. I didn't have to think about cleaning. A little bit. I didn't have to think about even bathing myself because I couldn't move. So my mom had to bathe me. It was the best of life. When she got ready to go home, I was like, please don't leave me. <laughs> oh, no one takes the sound bite about you talking about drugs. <laughs> yes, I'm not a drug person. I'm not a drug person. <laughs> so talk to us about what we must understand about pivoting our business during this time. As stated before, just kind of reevaluating what it is that we're doing. Um, do we have those uh, processes and procedures in place that will give us a higher touch uh, with our clients? Is there something that's been in our business that hasn't been working? And again, it's on that to-do list. I'll get to that later. I'll get to that later. Hey, mm-hmm. now is later. Now is the time to be doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, diversifying your portfolio as far as the ser- your service offerings. Um, right. And don't, diver- di- let me step back on that phrase. Don't be diversifying just to be diversifying. If you're not great at something or it's not something that you can be excellent at, then mm-hmm. don't try to implement it. But I'm pretty sure that there is something that we all do in taking this quiet time. Think about what people when people are talking to you, like, girl, you know that you are really, really good at such and such. If you're constantly hearing that, that's mm-hmm. that sound bite to say, you know what? I think I might need to investigate in that right. and kind of bring this full circle to see how I can implement it into my business. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are some of the things that as far as, you know, pivoting as far as like the things that you can be doing. And maybe it is, you know, thinking about your finances in the aspect of what am I spending money on that is just a waste? Do I need to start cutting things that I'm actually not utilizing? And right now, advertising might be one of those things that you might be wanting to cut out, especially if you look and see like who is in supportive of, you know, the black culture and who's made statements, those types of things. So reevaluating and looking at those particular things in your business so that you can pivot and move in a positive direction. Awesome. Awesome. Um, And I I love the statement of like, don't pivot just to pivot. Like (laughs) just because, you know, somebody else off flat 
$100,000 doesn't mean you should add that to your business too. Um, I firmly believe that. Um, and I just don't think that, that, you know, being one thing, like you don't, and it doesn't even maybe have to deal with the wedding industry. Right. Um, it could even possibly be something else, something that gives you peace. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I love that. I love that. Um, what areas of business can we readjust to sustain us during times like COVID-19 and beyond? Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things is the financials, looking at your financials, seeing where are you wasting the money? Um, protecting your assets. So the whole COVID thing has started. Have you taken a deep dive at your contracts to say, am I protecting myself? Um, this whole thing about your clients wanting to reschedule and all that type of stuff. Is your contract the way it is now? Is it set up to protect you financially for when your clients are ready to rebook or they just outright say, I want to cancel because of COVID. Are you protected within your contract agreement? Um, so definitely do that. I've already spent my money painfully um, to get my contract redone. And some of the ways that I am protecting myself is that, hey, you know, these are the reasons in which, you know, you would um, be able to reschedule your wedding or event. And then if you reschedule, I am putting parameters around it as far as, okay, did I lose a lot of? No, I'm here. Oh, your face went out. <laughs> as far as um, uh, when you reschedule, do I want you to reschedule for 2021 during my peak periods? Because if you reschedule during my peak period, guess what? I could have got a new client with some brand new money that could sustain me. So I've blocked out dates in that res that my reschedule clause to say, hey, and you need to know what are your peak periods for yourself, for your business. So things like that, um, risk management. So with the whole COVID thing, and uh, for me, especially because I have the Signature CEO Conference, I did a deep dive and create a, this, um, pamphlet of safety and procedures in regards to my business. One for the conference, um, now it's going to be virtual, but if I would have had it in person, is that here are all the safety precautions that we will put in place for an in-person meeting uh, to the point that doing that um, policies and procedures, I did consult with um, a nurse practitioner and also an attorney to make sure that what I had in there was going to cover me. Um, also with that is communication. What type of communication um, touch points do you have in your business that you've outlined can now serve as a template that whether it's COVID, it's a strike or hurricane, whatever that may come through that shakes up our lives. Now you have that in place and you can use it for the next, hopefully not disaster that comes along. So those are some <laughs> of the areas um, that I, you know, thought were helpful for me. Um, and oh, also um, waiver of liability. So if you are going back into the these events, do you have a waiver of liability uh, created that's going to protect you so that way your client isn't turning around and trying to sue you for not having these procedures in place? And plus, we're all in this together. Your client is the one forcing you to say, hey, I still want to have my event. So, you know, having the wording in there and stating that, you know, you're not held fully liable for being within this space. Gotcha. Um, I know that you've talked about, you know, stakeholders before, but what do you mean by, um, you know, everyone is a stakeholder in your business? So I talk about this a lot um, with my mentees is that whenever you have a business, you don't have to be a Fortune 500 business. Everyone that touches your business is a stakeholder. Of course, you yourself, you are the primary stakeholder because this is your baby. You birthed it, you know, and this is what you're relying on for, you know, finances. 
um, when it comes to your clients that are hiring you, that's the next biggest stakeholder in your business because they are being affected by what you do. Then comes your employees or your contractors, uh, their stakeholders in your business. If you're not um, treating them fairly or you know, giving them the tools and resources that they need to work with you properly, then that's going to affect you know, them as far as like what it is that they're going to do for you. Um, also, as stakeholders, it can be the parents on the wedding side, especially if they're the ones that are paying or if the parent contracted you. And then also your vendors, they are stakeholders. So your vendors, how they're stakeholders is the fact that, you know, me as a planner, if I'm not going to do you know, put on a fabulous event, bring all the right people together, then certain vendors aren't going to work with me because I'm not representing their brand. I'm not seen as someone that's going to bring, you know, a stellar production to them. So everyone that touches your business, they're stakeholders. They have some vested interest in what it is that you do. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Um, how does mentoring help to elevate your business and brand? You know, sh how should an individual seek a mentor? You know, what are some rules of thumb that when you are asking someone to mentor you? And while you answer this, I'm going to I'm going to go and grab my charger, which is just right here. <laughs> OK, uh, so uh, mentoring, I think everyone should seek a mentor no matter how many years you've been in business. Uh, mentoring doesn't have to be a set formal program, although I have a set formal program and um, I love having that program if you can afford to invest in it. Um, mentoring can be someone that you admire um, outside of the industry. And speaking outside of the industry, this is something that just happened to me recently is that um, I kind of change up you, and you want to change it up. You want to change up the people that you are seeking to mentor you, right? And so this particular person um, is huge in the DC market. They are a restaurant tour. I've had the privilege of meeting this person and having them speak at the Signature CEO Conference. And so I've been following them and they also have their own personal page aside from their restaurant page. And just by reading the articles and stuff and what they write about about entrepreneurship, I was like, you know what? This would be a perfect time for me to ask if you would mentor me. Mm -hmm. So I sent my email. And one of the things about sending the email, I put in there, re well, I really didn't have to reintroduce myself, but if you don't have, if the person isn't really familiar with you, introduce yourself, state that you're seeking mentorship, why you're seeking mentorship. So what are those three key things? Just three. You want to make it brief and quick. You don't want a long drawn out email. Why are you seeking the mentorship? You're putting a time frame on it. You're letting them know, especially if this is a busy person, that this is not something that you want formal where they have to do the work. You want to let them know that they're not going to do the work. You're going to do the work and present to them the things that you want to talk about each and every time. So I did that in my email. He wrote back. He thanked me that, you know, and I even said, I know this is a busy time because of all COVID-19 and the whole restaurant business. So just let me know when you're ready. So he said, well, you know what? He said, I appreciate this, but it's going to have to wait to 2021. I was a little bummed, but I graciously said, you know what? OK, 2021, by that time, I'll be looking for another mentor anyway, you know, to kind of put me in another direction. He emailed me back. This is on Friday. On Monday, he emailed me back and he said, Tara, I think I was too haste in sending you my response back because last week was a bad week for me. He said, I want to make this happen. He said, not only do I want to make this happen, he says, I want you to mentor me. Oh, wow. So I thought that was just when I saw that, I was like really, really blown. And he said, if you come up with your questions every time that we meet and I come up with my set of questions, we make it both, you know, um, worth each other's time, then I'll make this happen for you. So 
as far as what it is that you can do as far as like seeking mentorship, you know, make sure that the person that you're asking, you're not wasting their time. You have your bullet points. And every time that you are, you know, meeting with them, send them what you want to talk about in advance. So that way they can prepare and you guys, you know, have your set time. And whenever you're meeting, um, not only the set time as far as like the duration, as far as like when you want them to mentor you, but if we're meeting one hour for coffee or a cocktail to talk about this, it's going to be one hour. Be cognizant of the time, stay on time. If they are willing to go over, then go over, but make sure you have your agenda and you stay on point. I there's there's something that I love about this 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 mentorship that you have where it's a mutual respect. It's not like anyone feels like, oh, they're 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 just trying to suck information out of me, suck guidance out of me. Um you're helping them just as much as they're helping you. And I love that. Let me ask you this. Um as a mentee, what um, what should you go into the situation with the mindset of? Like, for instance, um, should you automatically go into the mindset that there may be a financial investment? Um, you know, things like that. Like, what what would make a good mentee? So, so a good mentee again, being prepared. So, I do have a formal program. My formal program is seven months, but there are a few people that I do mentee on the side. Um, with that, yes, each time it is definitely a financial investment because one, it, you are taking up my time that I could either be resting or working in my business. Mm -hmm. And then number three, all this up here did not come easy. And all this up here, I turned around and invested my time with someone else and had to pay for certain things to get it. So mentees don't try to skate across thinking like, I'm just going to get everything for free, especially don't try to educate yourself through Facebook university. That is not the way to do it. Um, <laughs> or, or Pinterest university or, or, or Pinterest Google university. university. Yeah, Absolutely. none of that. So, so yeah, it is a financial investment. And there are some that come to me and say, hey, you know what? I can't afford your seven month program, but can I get, well, for me, it's a minimum of two hours. Mm -hmm. Can I get two hours of your time to sit down and talk with you? I will say, mm -hmm. yes, You here's my hourly fee. Or if you want to, and it's, and it's always via Zoom, if you want to meet in person, you're gonna meet me for dinner. Mm. And that dinner is going to be at a restaurant of my choice that's going to equal the value of my hourly rate. Mm -hmm. So either way, you're going to pay for it because, mm -hmm. I mean, you should. You just should. Well, and I will answer all of your questions. Now, if you don't come prepared with your questions, so point blank for me, for those people that like book me out or, or whatever, if you do not have your questions, Two days prior to me meeting you, then we're canceling, reschedule. Hmm. I, I think that's fair. I mean, I'm not coming into the meeting blindly, and we're just going to say, oh, okay, well, what do you want to talk about today? Mm -hmm. That's a psychologist, psychologist or a psychiatrist. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not that way. And those people that are in my formal mentor program, um, they all know that once they enroll in the mentor program, they basically have me as a mentor for life. And that's what they all love about it. Any of them, they know that they can call me, text me at any point in time of the day or night, and I will pick up the phone for them. Yeah. And it's all about yeah, that bond awesome. because we've, we've built that relationship now with each other. Um, I will say the one thing about formal mentoring programs, especially those. So my mentor program is an in-person uh, mentoring program. I do do some where people are outside of the Washington, D.C. market, and then they'll right. they'll zoom in with us that are sitting in the class. Um, is that they're building relationships with those people that are sitting in the room now. And so right. they feel more comfortable and they don't feel like, 
book. I'm not doing this by myself. Somebody else is here with me. And so we have our own little thought, private Facebook group. And it just warms my heart just seeing them. They're going out. Well, before COVID, they're going right. out, chilling with, with each other. other. And sometimes yeah, mm -hmm. they'll post their pictures and I'll send them a little well, no, so like y'all didn't invite me, but that's what it's all about. <laughs> They're not supposed to. I want to see them grow and not feel like I have to go to terror all the time. Now I've, you know, I'm spreading my wings, as they say. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Um, talk to me about why it's important to know your value position. Oh no, proposition. Because how are you going to tell someone? You know, when you're talking with um, clients that why are you just the bomb? You know, you're not going to say that you're the bomb, but, you know, why are you great? Why are you in this business? Why are you here? Why should right. you do business with me rather than ABC event planning company down the street? And it does take knowing your craft, sitting down and talking to yourself about what it is that you do great. It is that research of knowing, you know, what is it that your um, colleagues in the industry are doing? Because we don't want to use competitors. They're your colleagues in the industry. You want to know exactly what it is that they're doing. And then sometimes it's you complimenting, you know, um, your colleague in the industry because your colleague may send you a client. Alana may be like, girl, I'm busy, but let me tell you, I'm sending this client your way because guess what? Your style, your service meets my same standards. So this is why I'm going to send them to you. Right, right. I, I, I think that it's great to build relationships with other planners um, so that you can refer business to each other because we can't do them all absolutely mm -hmm. cannot do them all. so i love that um and also, also too before you go to the next question your value proposition is not only for your clients it's also for your vendor partners too because as you're absolutely. developing these relationships again if i don't know you you got to tell me why i need to be working with you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you need to, you know, you need to know why you're great. Right, right. Um, what are the most common mistakes that you see with creatives? Uh, you know, what is the most common mistake that you see that creatives make with their business? In their business, with their business? Yeah. Thinking that success is going to happen instantly. Um, when you do get success, don't wallow in the success. Okay, now you've gotten it. How are you going to maintain it? Well, what is success? Success is going to be different for every single person. Success is going to be whether, hey, I have now branched over and now this is my event planning business or my photography business is where, you know, I've left my full-time job. Mm -hmm. Um Success means that, you know, and people used to get into the height. I know when I first started, oh, how many events do you do a year? You know, oh, you do 20, you do 30, you know, how many events do you do a year? It's not about the number of events, because if you have priced yourself correctly, mm -hmm. you can do 10 events a year and, and still make more money than that person is telling you that they're doing 20 or 30 events. If you look, tell, can you say it again for the people that's in the back? Because I don't think they heard it. If you price your services correctly, you can make more money than that person is telling you that they're doing 20 or 30 events a year. So it's not about, you know, the number of events. It's based upon what you want out of this life called entrepreneurship what you're building for yourself. And if you're knocking down your own personal milestones, your personal milestone may be that, hey, I want to get mentored by Preston Bailey. Okay, you get in his uh, mentoring program and you become one of the top performers. Hey, that's a success for you. Mm -hmm. Your success may be that, you know what? This money that I'm earning in my um, event planning business 
this is my retirement money. And my goal for my retirement money, and I'm just throwing a number out there, is that I'm trying to save up within the 10 years, $20,000 in my bank account. Mm -hmm. If you are on track and you're doing that, that's success. So your success is what you want it to be. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I think, I think, do you, do you recommend that at what point should a, uh, a creative determine what their success is? And like, is it something that's a pre, you know, premeditated or is it something that just, it's, they feel it when they feel it? You know what I mean? Well, with anything, um, the only way you're going to be able to measure your success, your success is to create a plan. So every freaking year I create my business plan, right? As far as like what I'm going to be doing for the year. And I break it down quarterly as far as like, these are the things I need to be doing quarterly. If you are not sitting down and writing yourself a business plan as far as what you're going to be doing each and every year, how can you measure success? You don't know what success is. It's true. You don't. Now, now you're going off, off of uh, fake success because you're just going to take whatever is coming to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, write out that plan. It's not hard. Even the people in my mentor program, they know every year I put that notice out there. Anybody that want to come sit with me to write their, their business plan, I'm here. Let's sit down. Let's get the writing. Do you feel like COVID-19 has delayed any progression? Has de you know what I mean? De delayed progression within, um, within a person's business any in any way? Or do you think that it can be used to help elevate their success? Hmm, that's a double-edged sword uh, <laughs> question. In some ways, I think COVID has um, digressed what it what we've done, and then in other ways, is uh, making us you know think outside of the box. Now, what now do we have to do to make our businesses thrive? Because there are going to be some people that aren't going to make it point blank, um, and that is sad and. When I say people that aren't going to make it, it's going to be totally things that may be out of their control, especially if you think about people that have brick and mortar locations, yeah. you know, they're paying rents, they're paying these high behind insurances. They actually have employees, 10, 20 employees. They have a lot that's like, you know, holding on them. So I would just say that at this point for us that are smaller business owners, you know, pivot, reevaluate what it is that you're doing. If you don't have a business plan, now it's time to let me sit down and start writing out my goals. Let me like frame this out as far as like what it is that I need to be doing. Yeah. Because it, I always say that your business plan is your GPS. Mm -hmm. You plan, you want to go somewhere. Say for instance, I'm, I'm planning to take my road back to North Carolina. I put the address into my GPS and along the way, I'm going to be stopping at rest stops before I get to my destination in North Carolina. So the GPS is your business plan. The stops that you're making along the way are your goals and objectives. When I finally get to my destination in North Carolina, success. Yeah. 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 I, I I definitely see some businesses not making it, um, not only just because of the brick and mortar, but simply because this is a very stressful time, period. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that the stress is going to ease up anytime soon in the event industry and with all of the changes and adjustments and, you know, delayed money and, you know, not getting money and things of that nature. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, all of that. Just thought I'd, I'd throw in that little question for you. <laughs> um, how does education affect your overall value proposition in the eyes of the, cons of the customer? You can never 
stop learning. Every I think life is a, a uh, everyday life is uh, part of educating yourself. Um, know what's going on. Know um, what the you know the new trends are in our industry. This whole thing about you know the PPP and E E I D L. That's a whole semester yeah. of work right there. <laughs> Yeah. Itself. But um, an educated person um, is its own secret weapon. If you're not educated, and when I say educated, I'm not saying college degree um, and all that kind of stuff, but just being knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. So gain that knowledge through mentoring. It can be through online courses. So I've also done as far as like online courses, just learning from people. I do masterclass. Mm -hmm. um, it's a minimal fee. It's $180 a year. Once you sign in, you have access to the entire library. And I don't know if you remember that Oprah Winfrey started masterclass, right? She would bring on all of these greats on the own network and talk to them about, you know, things in business, things in life, so forth. So that's what masterclass is. Just go to masterclass.com. So right now I'm doing Sarah Blakely. Um, I am doing the, well, now he's the former CEO of Disney because he resigned earlier this year. I did him and I did, um, oh, is, is it Deborah Roberts? The one that had cancer that's on GMA. Robin Roberts. Robin Roberts. I always get their names. Name? Robin is Roberts and name? Deborah Roberts. Yeah, Robin Roberts. So um, Sarah Blakely, I did hers. I finished all of her uh, master classes. Phenomenal. Can't say enough about it. Um, some of them, they have worksheets in there that you can do. Um, they do have case studies. So Sarah Blakely, one of her case studies, she had um, one of the co-founders of Minted Cosmetics. And, you know, Minted Cosmetics is um, a Black-owned um, cosmetics company. And so basically she sat there and interviewed the young lady, asked her several questions. And so you get to see how Sarah Blakely tells her how to improve her business. And even though that's somebody else's business you're sitting there listening at, I learned so much. I have a whole separate notebook that's about this thick just for my master class. Listen, Listen. So the other day I saw, I saw there was there was a chef and he's like a seafood chef. And I saw an advertisement for him and I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. And then there's this guy who is teaching people how to create their own gardens. And this is all on the master class. So I was thinking about this. So it's funny that you say that because I was thinking about just this thing and taking some of those classes. So when you, right. And so when you go in master class, they have, they have it broken down. Like you get ready to sign up for a university. So for me, I, I did business and leadership. That's where I'm at. I'm in the business and leadership section. And so uh -huh. they have all these people in there that's going to talk about business and leadership. Now in the arts, they have, um, our, um, ballet dancer, the black ballet dancer. That's mm -hmm. sad. Isn't it? And, we need to know everything about black. Uh, but they have Misty her Copeland. and then, huh? Misty Copeland? Yeah, Misty Copeland. She has her class. Um, um, they have makeup I'm artists sorry. in there that are talking about, you know, for people that are in the makeup industry, they're actually teaching you about the different types of makeup and all. So they have all types of categories in there for you to sign up for. So mm -hmm. if you want to just focus on business and leadership, which that's what I'm doing, I stay within that little folder and there's like a gazillion um, speakers in there. Mm, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So for a novice entrepreneur, what advice would you give them? So there is, well, there still is, still is. There is a syndrome called don't uh, fake it till you make it. Mm -mm, I hate that phrase. I do too. I hate that phrase. Don't fake it till you make it. Find out the answers. You know, 
again, it all goes back to educating yourself. So get rid of that fake it till you make it syndrome because you're doing a disservice to yourself. You're doing a disservice to your colleagues that are in this industry. So that's mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. um, always have continuous mentoring. And then my favorite thing is that Facebook University, that is not the place to get educated. Um, and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to reach out to people, to ask them for advice. It's all about the delivery as far as like how you go about asking. It's all about the delivery about how you go about asking for mentorship. You know, people that have been in the industry, their hearts will light up if you ask them, can you help me? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we want to give back. Right. Um, how do you think that COVID has changed the standard for events here moving forward? Mm. Well, it's definitely shaking it up because I've seen as far as um, catering companies are going through all types of things as far as like cleanliness and sanitation probably things that they should have been doing a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Even us as consumers, you know, when we go out to eat or we standing behind the scenes looking at, at events and stuff, we're like, oh, maybe they shouldn't do that. So now they're they're being forced to, you know, clean it up, step it up. Um, even now, as far as, you know, planners, we got to think. I haven't done one yet, but we're not cramping 10 people to the table right now. You can't, no, you just can't. Right. So now you got to re-educate your clients as far as like, okay, we booked at the beginning of the year for this amount of money. And now it's going to cost you more because now we got to have less people at a table. That means more tables, more centerpieces, more linens and so forth. Or are you going to decrease your headcount mm -hmm. so that you can stay within your same budget? Mm -hmm. Or yeah. do you just want to move to... 2021 and see how things go. Um, but I definitely think that, you know, we have a new way of doing events now on top yeah. of inclusion. On top of inclusion. <laughs> um, do you think that events will resume this year across the country? <sighs> Funny that you ask because I've been seeing on Facebook, I mean, back to Facebook, on Instagram, like some parts of the US, people are having events now, but no type of covering or whatever. Here in the right. DC market, we are still on pause. Right. We are still on pause. You can't do events with no more than 10 people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you go to Florida, people are hanging out freely. Um, but as far as the entire U.S., and it's not only affecting events, it's affecting the entertainment industry. All our little favorite TV shows, they're on pause. There is yeah. nothing yeah. happening. No concerts, mm -hmm. movie productions. I don't know what we're going to see in the movie theater next year. So that's Will a real effect the in itself theater right theater there, the movie year. industry. Yeah, yeah. I... I don't I can't see how the movie theater market is going to sustain itself yeah. after this. Because you have to post some personal to make a movie. Well, no, no, no. I mean the theaters. Mm -hmm. the, the actual the, you know, sitting oh, in yeah. a movie theater. Um I think that this is going to bring about a new level of comfort and what you know what that means, you know, being able to watch some of the movies that we're supposed to be in theaters at home is real comfortable. It's real, real comfortable and not having to go and sit at in a in a in a seat that's suspect on, on floor that's sticky and all this other kind of stuff. I don't know. I just think it's icky. <laughs> no, the older I get, the more conscious of germs that I get. Um, and not like talking about getting on a plane. I'm not a big plane person. I mean, I get on it because I have to go somewhere and I literally, and I will let everybody know on Facebook how it works out. 
um, I ordered this uh, travel kit. It comes in like a little Ziploc bag. And so you take it with you when you go on a plane. So it comes with your own seat cover I to put that. over the plane seat, your I gloves, your wipes. I spent $24.95. I'm going to see how it comes out because I will be using it every time I get on a plane. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you I'm already funny. I can't stand riding on planes. I've always thought planes was nothing but a big petri dish, petri dish of germs. Yeah. yeah. Germs. I wipe down everything. Mm -hmm. I was a kid in uh, college that people used to joke with me that, oh, Tara got some Lysol or some um, sanitizers. I wiped down everything. Anytime <laughs> I went into the bathroom, I would wipe it down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what what are some new standards since you're a wedding planner like myself? What are some new um, how can the, how, how can a wedding planner raise the bar during this time? Um, you know, what kind of. Elevated standards should they come to the table with uh, based on what's going on now? Again, having your policies and procedures in place uh, mm -hmm. for your own business letting your clients know that on event day, this is how my team will be operating because I've already told my clients that my team will be coming with their mask, all that to your event. Yeah. Got a problem with it. I'm sorry. But also being an educator to your clients as far as like, I'm now critiquing my clients as far as like, okay, these are the things that you need to update and put on your website, informing people that you are aware of what's going on, that they need to be following the CDC guidelines. Also, we love right. you, but please do not come to my wedding if you have been sick, you know, helping them. And if your clients see that you're in it with them, then they're going to love you for it. Do things a little bit differently. Uh, one of the things that I did differently, which I was going to initially, and I still did, have an individual co call with all of my brides. I hosted a little brown bride town hall meeting on Zoom where they all came in. I talked about all of the things that are going on in our DC market what the buzzword is out there as far as like what things would look like once we go back. Mm -hmm. And after I said all of my spill, I quietly said, who has any questions? Mm -hmm. They were all quiet. So then I said, well, who is scared on here about their wedding? And then one of my brides kind of like did like this. <laughs> I said, get off mute, let's talk. And once she started talking, they all just started chattering. And at the mm -hmm. end of the conversation, they said, you know what? We don't even care about COVID right now. We feel so much better. We felt, felt like we were on an island by ourselves. They said, Tara, just let us know what we need to do next and we'll do it. Yeah. And so they all felt comfortable. And so ever since that call, I check in with them, send them emails. Like we all agreed mid-June that we would come to the table and say what we have to develop a plan B. Yeah. Which looks like they gonna have to go to plan B. <laughs> but um, yeah. we have to develop our plan B of action. And so I sent their reminder email out um last Friday. And so they've already gone, went into my calendar, scheduled their appointment. So now we're gonna be talking about what's plan B. What are we going to put in place? Yeah. So it's all about that communication and also communicating with your team. You don't want to just assume that your team is ready to go back to do events. So if there's a member of your team that's not ready to go back and do events, because as planners, we're, we're breathing everybody's, everybody's stuff that's coming out of their mouth because we're in it. We're in it. We're talking to everybody. So if there's a person on your team that's not comfortable you shouldn't be forcing them to go back. But you also need to be educating them to say, hey, these are the parameters that I have in place for you yeah. so that you can feel like you're safe. I have the sanitizer. I have the mask. I even have the temperature check thing that, you know, I will be checking their temperature before they come to the event. Yes, you're going to tell me if you've been sick or not, but I'm also going to take your temperature too right. to say, Hey, you're safe. And my clients know that information too. Yeah. So you just want to make sure that everybody 
um, knows what's going on and elevating your level of communication with people. Yeah. And then those people that do have to postpone, I just did one who was supposed to get married. Um, I didn't do it on the actual day that they were supposed to be married because they decided to go out of town. But I contacted the baker. They did a little cake for them. I did champagne, a little, you know, champagne flutes. You know, you want to make them feel like it's okay. Mm -hmm. So whatever a little extra mile that you can do to, you know, reassure your clients that everything's going to be okay and that you're in control. And most importantly, as the saying goes, never let them see you sweat. Because if you're sweating bullets, then your client loses all confidence in you. That's true. That's true. So you need to remain calm at all times. Even if you might not know the answer at that time, you need to still be remain confident, cool and collected until you get that answer. Right. I agree. Terry, you've dropped some amazing jewels on us today. Thank you so, so, so very much. Um, if anybody has any questions, please chime in now, this very second. <laughs> but I, I think I think you've been really, really thorough about um, just up in your game and just all of the the information that you that you share with all of us. Um, how can people reach you? They can oh, reach. Oh, I'm sorry. Talk to us about. The Signature CEO. Um, oh, yeah, talk to us about that. Uh, the Signature CEO Conference. Um, and you have so graciously been there to speak. Thank you so much. Let me just side note you real quick. Possibly one of my favorite ones. Um, Thank you. The swag is out of control. The speakers are out of control. The attendees are out of control. I really, really, really enjoyed myself. Um, well, thank you. I, I came. So I'm sorry. I just had to, to, to give that. Thank you. Thank you. Because thank you. Oh, yeah. you're like Oprah. So I want you to put your stamp of approval on it. So right. when Oprah speaks, people listen. So Oprah, I thank stamp you. It. Stamp it. <laughs> Um, so the Signature CEO Conference, you can find that at thesignatureceo.com. It is a conference for creative entrepreneurs, and the platform is to elevate your business mindset. So we're not talking about um, the creative aspect of what we do. It's all about business, from um, accounting to legal um, you name it. We're talking about things that's going to make you a better leader and a better business owner so that you can be sustainable in this business. Um, of course, this year we did have the pivot. Um, I did put it on pause, hoping that we would be able to come back for that in-person human connection, um, but it's not going to happen. So I did pivot and change it to a virtual and just made that announcement the other day. So if anyone is interested in joining us virtually, um, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, all the details are on the website and then also um, the email address, if you want to email to ask any personal questions, uh, you can do so. And it is July 27th, 28th, and 29th. Um, this will mark five years of the conference. Um, we were going to have this huge black tie gala, but that's not going to happen. Um, but we will be back in 2021. So um, continue to follow us. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook. And again, go to the website to get all of the details. And for any of you that are secret seeking mentoring, uh, it is a seven month uh, formal program where um, you're mentored straight. Uh, at the end, there is graduation. Your final exam is to do a style shoot, which has to be sent to a media publication to get featured. And after that, you are a mentor. I'm your mentor, mentor for life. Um, oh, the next class that. starts um, in March 2021. I love that. Once they complete, they have a mentor for they life. have a mentor for life. That's awesome. And they know um, it. Miss Linda is on here. I see one of my mentees. Linda Wright. Yeah. <laughs> That's so awesome. Well, thank you again so, so, so very much. I appreciate you for joining us. Um, tomorrow is the last day, everybody. Uh -huh. And I know I'm sad, but we are ending it with Andrew Roby. Okay. Oh Lord, y'all brace yourselves. <laughs> brace yourselves. Brace yourselves. Andrew is gonna come through. Okay. Uh, I had a, like 
divine intervention stepped in and moved him from last week to this week to where like ending this thing on a on a dynamic note and um we're going to talk about virtual events and meetings you know that's something that we're all doing right now okay I can't stress that to you enough. We're all doing that right now. And there's things that you need to be aware of, like your background, like you shouldn't have baby clothes in the background and things of that nature. Like, you know, at least attempt to, you know, clean things up and, and make things be aware of your surroundings whenever you, know, you do it virtually. Be aware of your surroundings to the best of your ability and attempt to have I attempt to have my child put away on every one of these doggone things and <laughs> and let me tell you he interrupts in some kind of way uh but he he did a little better today but anyway again um see everyone tomorrow at one o'clock the same time same place on southern noir and again tara thank you so much i really appreciate you taking the time to share your knowledge with us thank you for having me darling bye everybody <laughs>